Um, but what you do care about is things like splice. Is it legal? Is it safe? How do samples work? Um, these may be questions that you have or more. What is Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Antihero. Uh, we have a special kind of episode for you today. Um, as you may already be well aware, this isn't a music mix. Um, this isn't a music video or edit or anything of that nature. Um, today I kind of wanted to do a quick response video. Um, and this is actually like my second take because I was recording at like midnight last night. But what you do care about is things like splice. Is it legal? Is it safe? How do samples work? Um, these may be questions that you have or more. So I'm going to get into that today. And this video is a direct response to just a few videos that I've seen on YouTube. Um, one is from the top music attorney and then the other is from Venus Theory, um, who, whose videos I very much enjoy. So, um, but before we dig into all of that, I do want to make a small disclaimer that any views, or you know, opinion or advice in this video is not legal advice, is not anything official. I'm going to put a little, like, official statement down here about it not being legal advice that you can read. Um, but you should consult like a personal or professional lawyer or attorney because um, I'm not one. I'm just someone who's worked in the music industry for uh, a long time, and that's it. <laughs> now that I've made that statement, the other statement I'd like to make is um, because we're covering a few different people's videos, don't go to their channels and like comment on their videos or be like, this is wrong or whatever. Um, cause I am going to be pointing some things out, but I'm not here to like pick apart videos or expose anyone or anything like that. So, but without further ado, I'll give you a short introduction of who I am. My name is David, uh, or otherwise known as Rare Pixel or Antihero, um, or a slew of other monikers. And I've been working in the music industry for seven years now. Um, I've been working for this company right here. Still Hop Music uh, for seven years, and I've been doing copyright and legal work for over four of, of yeah over four of those years. Um, the first couple of years, I started out doing like social media and uh, community management and things of, like that. So I've uh, done partnerships with folks like Square Enix and Clay Entertainment, who made Don't Starve, if you know the Don't Starve games or Oxygen Not Included, um, and also Rogue Games. So. Uh, who is a publisher, I, and I think they've actually worked with um, Game Grumps. But those, those are a few of, the par few of the partnerships. I've also done like legal audits and um, agreement reviews and sample packs. Um, I'm also a music producer. I've been producing music for over five years. And wouldn't you know it, I'm also a sample-based producer. I love sample-based music so much. So um, I tend to look into, you know, uh, a lot of the music creation process around sample sampling. So that's a little, uh, a little s synopsis about me. But getting into the nitty gritty of this, this is actually like very, this is an unscripted video. Um, so you're probably going to see like a ton of edits. You've probably already seen a, a few edits and like snippets, uh, whatever, and that'll continue throughout, throughout the video. This is my script. Yeah, look at that. There's just seven points there. It's not like a script script, but they're just notes for me to go off of and to talk about and share with you. So, but the first one is, you know, I don't like exposed videos. Like I see on YouTube all the time, like, oh, this company's exposed. Chipotle has been exposed. And it's like, okay, we get it. Uh, you know, there's obviously like true crime cases and like, I'm, I'm not, I mean, even those can be like overdone, but, uh, but, but like things like, uh, I don't know, if you're committing fraud for a video game charity or something like that, that revolves around a disease like yeah you know if you expose someone for that um i think a video for that can be okay i don't know anyways my point is like i'm not exposing anyone here um i'm simply like responding to some things 
that I watched in the video and that I would like to clarify and correct. This has to do with Splice. I'm a big lover uh, of Splice. I, I use Splice. Um, and you'll probably see in my Splice app, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it here, but like you can see like I have quite, um, quite a lot of credits. So I've given them a lot of my money, and I am, uh, I'm very happy to have done that. Because uh, I do make a u I do make a lot of use out of the samples. I also use a variety of other samples. I, I like to use multiple sources. But yeah, without further ado, I wanted to get into the video that the top music attorney made, and I'm strictly going to be sticking to the email that they shared. Like I'm not going into type timestamps in people's videos and just like partially digging into them. I did want to cover this email because this is, this is an email that Splice had sent them, um, and they included it in the live stream. And uh, you know, when it comes to copyright law, outside of music law, I've done a little bit of research. Um, this is fair use, so I'm using this email because it's been made publicly available. Uh, and they include timestamps here, and if you really want to go check that out, you can. Um, I will link the videos that I do talk about below. But yeah, the first part. The first part really just has to do with like misinformation, like that's like personal business between Spl Splice and uh, and Crystal. The second part here, which is the mischaracterization of transferable rights, and uh, and then they go on to like criticize, and then it has it pretty much they're talking about the two parts in their terms of use, which has to do with the non-transferable aspect or the transfer of rights as well as sublicensing. Um, I do want to clarify that, and again, uh, the reason why I'm making this is because um, they are a music attorney, and even though I'm not a music attorney, I'm not—I don't have a law degree at all. Um, however, I've had the great fortune of arguing with <laughs> so many lawyers um, over things like copyright or agreements or um, terms and conditions, and I've argued with lawyers over trademarks, and where they've listed the defense of like just a bunch of like resources that are like dot com or like urban dictionary i had someone send me a link to urban dictionary once um as a claim that the word was generic and 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 just for context on that and to let you know why that's not an appropriate source to credit um or the claim is because like let's take a registered trademark like nintendo for example right um you can go on urban dictionary and type in nintendo and you will get a definition that doesn't make it generic, and that doesn't make make the trademark null and void. So, um, I don't know. What, so I've had like people with law degrees send me like sources and things like that, and it, it I just question a lot. Um, I don't know anything about Crystal or this top music attorney, and I assume that they're actually good at what they do. Like this is just one mistake. I've never had any conversation with them. I don't know the extent of like their practice or knowledge. So, um, for all intents and purposes, I I believe that they're you know oh they're okay so um but getting back to the transfer of rights and the sublicensing part um to clarify that and i've pulled up the terms of use page for splice here that they have publicly available and again i'll make all of this available in the in the description um but it says here Subject to your compliance with the agreement, we grant you a non-exclusive, non-transferable, perpetual right to use sounds you obtain through Splice. Um, this means you may modify, reproduce, blah 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 blah. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going through all the terms of use. Like this, as you can see, is a very, is a very long page. Um, I'm just simply covering section three of the terms of use and Splice sounds because that's primarily what they're referring to. Um, because that's really like the meat of the uh, of the agreement. So now they also say that you can sublicense it, and there was and there was a lot of confusion between those two terms, um, and especially when it comes to things like remixes. And to explain it in the most simple way, when they say that the license is non-transferable. It, that, that's essentially saying you cannot transfer the raw sample, okay? So, and I'm actually going to break down what a new recording is because you, you, we have section three here, and you have new recordings and creative works and prohibited uses. 
Uh, the difference between new recordings and creative works is new recordings has to do with any new recording that you yourself make that becomes an original recording that you own or a new recording of your original recording, which includes remixes. Um, and that's where the sub-licensing part comes in because when someone takes your original recording and remixes it or makes a derivative work, um, and yeah, and just makes a new recording out of your original recording, you are sub-licensing that sound to them because you own a license for it. And they're saying that you can sub-license it. So you're safe, you're good. And they are safe as well. If you export stems and you give them that sound, that's fine. As long as you own the license from Splice, you bought the sound and everything's good and dandy, none of that matters. Now what you can't do is immediately buy the sound, not make a song at all, and then send them a file of that sound and then have them make an original new recording. That's not okay. And that's what this is saying in the agreement. Um, and then as for Creative Works, uh, Creative Works is basically uh, like a is like what you would license for like TV and film and video games, which they all list out here and all the appropriate things that you can do, radio, publishing, everything, vlogs, so-called vlogs. Can't do it for NFTs. Um, and that's like, <laughs> that's just their choice. But yeah, and you're, you're basically allowed to do that. What you can't do, again, they also use the words non-transferable. Um, you can't take the raw sound and you can't use, the, use it as like a stock sound and give it to um, like another sample library or, to, or for radio and TV. You can't just like um, take a crash symbol and do nothing to it and, then, and just use that crash symbol and call that an original re recording and then license that to a film and TV company. That is illegal. That's, or it's illegal according to this agreement. So you can't do that. Um, but you can use that crash, crash sample with like a guitar or maybe some drums and then make that an original recording and then, uh, you know, license that for TV and film or video games. That is completely okay, even if you don't ch change the sample. Um, I'm going to talk into, I'm going to talk about like what you should do with these samples and sampling in general a little bit later on. Um, but for now, I just wanted to clarify the terms of use. And then they have prohibited uses here, um, which tells you all of that. Like, you cannot just redistribute the sound. You can't transfer the sound to people that don't own a license for it who want to make an original recording. So you can't just share the sample with someone. They have to go on Splice and buy that same sample themselves. So that's all, that's all not good. And it's... It's good to just review all of this. It's honestly good to review this whole terms of use page, but this is like really the part that most people are concerned about and there's a lot of controversy over. So yeah, when it comes to things like remixes and everything, like you're fine. That is that is totally okay. So going back to the points here, um, it says you also dwell on the issue of creative works is the only avenue to exploit the sounds commercially. So and Again, they just kind of confused um, new recordings with creative works, which, you know, does happen. Um, but again, I want to reiterate that new recordings is any original recording that you make and creative works is anything that you do with that original recording in regards to licensing it to someone else or using it in a different project um, or like using it for a website or anything like that. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And hey, you know what? If at any point throughout this video you are confused, um, drop me a comment, drop me an email, feel free to join our Discord and reach out, and I will help answer your questions. So, and I think that was all the points, because you mentioned the issue with the ability to sublicense. Um, and really, yeah, I guess that, that's a lot of the points, but I feel like I covered them with that simple clarification of like what you can do in terms of remixes, because when it comes to remixes too, like it, you can do as many remixes of the original recording. If you make an original recording and then someone does a remix and then someone remixes the remix of the song that you made, so that's like the second remix down the line, like that's okay as long as it's a remix of a remix of your original recording. Um, and it's all tied to that original recording and licensed from there. It, that's totally okay. So, but you have to own the license. That's that's the biggest thing. 
as long as 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 long as someone has a license to use those sounds, it's whatever. So and the same thing with Creative Works. So the second thing that I wanted to go over was a video that Venus Theory did in regards to uh, Splice as well. Now he there there's a specific point in the video where he talks about melodies because when it comes to uh, copyright in the song, things like drum patterns and chord progressions can't be copyrighted, but things like uh, melodies and lyrics, for example, can be copyrighted. And that's when it comes to things like content ID or fingerprint audio systems um, that are identifying or comparing and contrasting different songs to find a match. They're usually trying to find the match in the melody or the copyrighted um, material, right? Or the things that can be copyrighted. So he points out, well, if you use a melody from Splice, doesn't that cause a conflict or then people get flagged or doesn't it cause this huge like legal process and then like who has the ownership? You know, he, he asked that as well. I want to clarify that. Because the whole point of like sample libraries or sample licenses or samples in general or sample ownership and then companies like Splice is that they're a third party, right? They are an intermediary or arbitrator that acts as the bridge between sample owners because they own this they own the sound. They own the sample that two people are using. So if there is the dispute, if there is a dispute between two people or three people or 500 people they are the ones who dispute it they take care of all that that's that's literally what their service is and what they're doing the, the answer to that is very simply splice owns the melody um you don't and neither does another person um and honestly i find that i think that's really good now the negative part or the bad part of it that he points out is well if two people if two people use the same melody and don't transform the sound at all is not going to come up as copyright or aren't they going to get copyright claimed yes um this could happen now if this does happen usually it happens because someone's like oh they stole either my sample which is a foolish thing that say or claim because you again use the splice sample you can't claim ownership of that um of someone using that melody so if that happens you can always dispute it and uh you know uh, uh, <laughs> splice gives you a uh certificate of content license right so you can use this on youtube you can use it in content id and you can do all this uh the negative part that Venus Theory brings up with that is that it can be a lot of additional work. Um, but allow me to expand on that as well. Um, because whether or not you use Splice, you could very well use the same melody without even knowing it and get claimed. Um, ideal, uh, that, that top music attorney said they got confused because of Music Catalog. They work with Music Catalog a lot. I work with Music Catalog. I also work with samples. I also work you know, with stems and very specific aspects of songs. I also work in rights management and uh, things like content ID on YouTube, right? That's my day-to-day -day work. So um, I see a lot of cases where things get claimed even if a sample isn't used. Even if zero samples are used and someone has a completely original work, people still claim things. Um, either they're doing it inappropriately or they're doing it in good faith because they do think something was stolen. Um, so whether or not you use Splice, they can, this can still happen. It's a lot less common if you don't use the same sample. Um, I will say that, but it doesn't make you completely 100% safe from the content ID system because uh, really what it boils down to is a issue with the content ID system as well as the dispute system and the way things are disputed. So that being said, the, the argument and controversy around Splice, um, and I've wanted to make this video for so long, um, but I'm kind of glad I waited because I've learned so much more since then that is allow me that allows me to explain this at least I think a little bit um, uh, a little bit more simply. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of controversy, and a lot of people be like, 
using Splice is cheating or using Splice is not legal or like, what about content ID or what about who owns what and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's the whole point of Splice. And like people, and it, what's weird to me is people will use like other sample libraries and be like, ah, no, this is okay because somehow this license is different than Splice's. And like, there are nuances in every license. So like that part is true, but at the same time, the function, the core aspect and the ownership and the rights holders and everything, all that's the same. So someone else, a third party still owns the sample. And if a third party still owns the sample, that means you don't own the sample. Someone is disputing, someone is handling all the rights ownership aspects for you, right? And when someone else uses that sample, they're handling all the dispute process or giving you a license and giving you clearance in general. Um, and this is something that, you know, although I've seen more common, commonly amongst producers, it's also something that just like prevalent in my industry uh, amongst professionals. And sometimes it's, and, and a lot of it has to do with that, that same aspect. And it's like, oh, well then who really owns it? And it's like, you should know, you should know who owns it. You work with licensing and rights and like all this, like it, like a third party does own it and you can easily get it cleared. And they're, you, they, they, specifically tell you you can use it for those commercial purposes if you want to use it in film or tv or on netflix or who or whatever you can but people will tell you that you can't um or they won't let you and to me it's it's such a trivial and such a pretty it's just a loss of money really it's just it's just a way for people to make less money um on both sides it's a lose-lose you know whereas like i think this way of sampling is a win-win for a lot of people it's a win for the producer and it's a win for uh, like people like music supervisors or video game developers or really any kind of like publisher, you know, because yes, there is a little bit more work in clearing the rates and disputing some aspects sometimes. Um, if someone's trying to claim something or someone's trying to be like, oh, you stole this or like whatever, you're like, but you can easily clear that. You can easily dispute that. It, it's a little bit silly. So, um, but in regards to all that, I'm going to give you some cheat codes in regards to content ID. Um, and in regards to your splice samples, if you were to get claimed, um, and it's at first we're going to start with like, you get a copyright claim, right? Someone's like, you use the same melody as me, right? We're creating a hypothetical here and you post your song gets copyright claimed so you can dispute it and you can dispute it because you do have a license and I'm going to show you real quick here. Um, splice does give you a certificate of content license as i mentioned before and if we go into the splice app you can just click on the little three dots here on any sound that you own and generate certified license and then you can put in your full legal name and that's my full legal name for all of you who like the docs and then there's my artist name if you want to check me out um and you can just generate a license here and then boom, you download it and do that. Boom, you have another one, right? And here is the nice part. Um, at the top here, it tells you when this license was generated um, or the date that, yeah, the date that you generated it. However, it will also tell you down here next to the sample name when you actually bought it and used it. So that's another like useful piece of advice. So if you upload something, let's say after that date that you bought it, right? Well, then you have a pre-existing license by default, even if the date of the letter is a different one. But that counts as the date that you're sending it. If someone's asking you to send like, uh, you know, yeah, a content license or something like that, or a license to prove that you own the sample or own the rights to whatever sound that you're using, well, it's always going to be the date of which it's written, right? And that's that's the top. So that's all that it is. Um, and then they'll use your name and they give them like, they put hyperlinks in here for terms of use. And they actually give you a hyperlink to go to the sound as well. So you can just play and verify the sound. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty cool. So, and the reason why all that is useful is because um, typically you should have these licenses and just for being a good role model and good putting good practice out there, um, anytime you use a splice sample, you should keep it in the project folder of your music 
um, or uh, of your track file. And you should keep all the licenses in there for these cases or for anything. Um, and for some people, I know some people are going to be like, oh, why would that sounds like a lot of work? Why would I do that? Blah, blah, blah. You should have that anyway. Like, if, because I hear, I mean, I hear so many people are like, oh, I want to make money from music and da, 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 da. And like, there's that whole thing, right? Um, if you're trying to make money from music and you're trying to license your music, you have to disclose this. And technically, you should be disclosing it every time that you upload it through a distributor. And you should be doing it then. But, you know, we all make mistakes. And sometimes that, sometimes we forget or sometimes we just, it just skips our mind. We make music fast and get it out, right? Um, it happens. And that's why these specific details I mentioned with the date that it's written and also the date that it was purchased and acquired are so useful um, because it works retro retroactively. So if you do forget to tell your distributor or you do need a license um, for clearing it for film and TV or for any licensing needs, you know, you do have it. You have it listed right there. So that is a super important thing to know. Um, and then, and then also like, again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I don't work for Splice. Um, however, hey Splice, if you want to sponsor this video, <laughs> you want to, <laughs> you want to hire me? Like, I, I, I'm available. But, um, but that being said, I, I am not like an official spokesperson for Splice or know the full scope of Splice. So they do give you an email here so you can ask additional questions, um, that I may not be able be able to answer or maybe you do reach out i'm like hey i can't answer that but boom there you have it so that's also important to note so yeah you you they really give you everything that you need to have full rights and ownership the trickiest part is the dispute process so let's go back to that dispute process right let's say that you dispute content id and it gets rejected right you have the license and you put all the correct information and they still rejected it whoever is claiming you really just wants to take down your music well now here's the cool thing is you can you have a couple options here, right? You can look at who's claiming your copyright, and you can go to them directly, and you can give them that license and tell them to release it. Um, alternatively, you can go to your distributor and ask them to dispute it for you. Some distributors will, some distributors won't. You have to check with them and ask them. Um, that's just as simple as sending an email or getting in touch with customer support. Um, and I say simple, as simple as getting in touch with customer support, but some, some distributors, unfortunately, don't have that. Um, in which case, I would recommend that you switch your distributor, and that can be a separate video for another time. So you want to check with your distributor. Um, and you can even, if you can figure out what distributor the claimant or the person who's claiming your video is using, you can go to them and ask them to release it too with the information that you have um, because you have legal grounds to release the claim. So there's that. Now, sometimes there the claimant won't even be a label or an artist or a person. It'll be a publishing company. So what you would do in that case is you would simply find the publishing company. Um, and they're usually pretty public. They're usually a little bit more open and easier to get in touch with. Um, and you can go to their website and you can find whatever email and email them. And just email them the correct licensing info and be like, hey, you claimed my video. Um, you know, the, and, and again, in the Splice license it says uh right here including claims of master publishing rights of the same so it it allows them to absolve you of that copyright claim um they're legally you know obligated to because uh if i remember correctly i believe splice does um register their sounds with publishers and that's just to ensure people don't take their sounds and then you know register them with publishers and then create like this whole legal mess um because i think that was a concern with people before um but again splice protects against that you don't have to worry about that and you again you have this license you have full rights to exercise the ownership of the sound that you own um so all of this sounds like super complicated and like why would they use a sound again a lot of this is also very rare um it does happen from time to time and if you get stuck or you're just like, what the hell? Like, I'm, I'm still stuck in the dispute process. Come talk to me. I literally do this every single day for work. Um, this is like my job. Um, so I'm happy to help you. Um, and again, I've worked with artists, music catalogs, sample libraries, sample packs, you name it. Um, I've had a 
wide variety of clients through the label that I work for. Um, and I can help you too. So don't get stuck. Now, there is a brief sampling case in regards to sample libraries I did want to cover. Um, I want to make a separate video in regards to sampling just in general because that's a whole other topic um, of, <laughs> of uh, legal nuances that's fun to explore. But I'm going to save that for another time. Um, I'd love to make a future video. And also, if you have any ideas for similar videos in this format that you'd like to see or hear about, um, let me know in the comments below. Um, let me know if you'd like to see a sampling video or a video about s sampling. Um, I'd be happy to do it. But, um, but this brief case, because there's another Venus Theory video where he does cover sampling, um, which I don't totally agree with. Um, and again, I love Venus Theory. I watch, his, I watch a lot of his content, and I like a lot of his content. Um, I think there are some things or some worries, and <laughs> I don't want to say this is specifically him because it's just like the top music attorney, but I feel like people create a narrative or like, you know, we're all writing a script or something like that. Um, and that's primarily why I chose not to have a script. Um, I'm not using a script because, uh, you know, I, I don't want to bullshit people or plagiarize for that matter. Just want to like, talk to people and like share what I know and share what I, uh, the knowledge that I have offhand. And maybe sometimes this does come with like mistakes or anything like that. And I'm open to be being corrected because again, I, that's kind of like the double edged sword of not having a script. Um, however, I'm pretty confident in like the information that I'm sharing here. So, um, but yeah, a lot of people have a narrative that they tend to write into a script, and a lot of these narratives are, I don't know, sometimes they can be dramatic, or sometimes they can be like, oh, you know, these are the dangers, or, or it's like those exposed videos I was talking about. It's just like, people are typically writing things in such a way that serves their narrative, or to spin a story, or to make things, or make them a bigger problem than they actually are, or just like, seems like a bad idea, or like, this, is, this thing is bad because we don't know you know or how do we know and it's there are answers out there usually not always of course but um but in this case there usually are um but again i'm not here to like pick apart people's videos because it's not it's not every video venus theory makes a lot of good points and a lot of good videos and like not he's not always making like oh this service is exposed or bad or like he's not always uh i i would say he's <laughs> he tends to be a little bit cynical but um I think that's just kind of his videos and, and in a lot of ways it's charming. Um, but in regards to his sampling video with Not Low, he brings up a point where they use a construction kit. Um, and those are like the little demos and some, not every sample pack includes them, but some sample packs will have like a demo or a construction kit that is meant to show you like the full scope of uh, the sample pack sounds or capabilities. Um, and sometimes, you know, some of these construction kits, because I think he says in his video that the construction kits are just basically demos. Um, however, one thing I want to note is I do own some sample packs where there are construction kits, and yes, it does act as a sort of demo, but there are also other sounds that aren't really included in the uh, rest of the sample pack. So, that are free for you to use because you do own a license for it. So that's something to take note of. Um, but he goes in to say that Not Low took these construction kits and basically just like put a bass over them or vocals or whatever and then re-upload them. Um, and I'm not here to I'm not here to say that they're lazy. I'm I'm ambivalent on the matter, quite frankly. Like I I heard about the case and I'm like, you know, that's not something I would have done. But also I'm not here to shame or like whatever like again i'm a sample based producer i love sampling and i love sample based music i love listening to it um i have such a deep appreciation for sampling because it really is an art of itself um but i'm not I'm, this video isn't for debating like <laughs> you know what's bad good or like whatever um but sticking to the facts of the way that they sampled um and in terms of using a sample library or a construction kit or using samples from a sample library I would say it gets a bit dicey, right? Because you're using a majority of the sounds. And so it gets into this weird gray area where technically it could be 
misconstrued as you trying to sublicense or relicense the um the pure sounds or the raw samples and sounds with like a tiny bit of touches and calling it a remix um and you know and i actually want to refer to what venus theory said in his video about his friend friends in nashville where they said uh change a word keep a third right that's what what they say and i think that's a pretty good rule of thumb in terms of like you know, because when it comes to copyright, like, there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of subjectivity that comes into play, um, which kind of sucks. But uh, but I think the one-third rule is really good in terms of the similarity or likeness to another track or melody or whatever. Because, yes, I would say if if you keep 66% of a song, um, or, like, let's say 80%, right? Like, you don't change 80% of a song and then you just change 20% and then you re-release it and it just sounds like that song with a different lyric or whatever. Um, Technically, yeah, that's going to fall into copyright. And there could be a case that's being made that you're re-licensing re or sub-licensing the sounds or the samples themselves for those commercial uses, whereas... um. You know, where is their intended user to be transformed or for you to change to change 80% of the track so then only 20% of the original sound remains? And then you have 80% of the similarity or likeness dissolved or changed, right? Or transformed. So that's where it gets a little bit dicey. And I did want to I did want to touch upon that because I think that is because I mentioned earlier in the video that um you know, the way you go about sampling and transforming these sounds is really important. Yeah, the crash symbol that I mentioned previously in the video. And you could transform the sound and then license it because it's technically now a new original recording. Um, you just can't sublicense it to be used as a stock sound, to be distributed and sold as a sample for others. But you can just use that sound by itself in film and TV and whatever. Um, and, like, that's okay. So... And same thing with the raw sample too. Like as long as that raw sample isn't being sublicensed to be used as a raw sound, um, for sample packs or other things, you can still use it in film, and TV, and like every. It's all in the splice terms in terms of use. Um. So like, yeah, you can use the single crash symbol as like an effect in a movie and film or video game or whatever, and like that's fine. But you just cannot. You just can't sell the sound or like give it to someone else for free and then have them make a new original recording with it. That's the only thing. So that's where it gets a bit dicey. As long as you have a license and you own own some of the work, you know. Uh or you're or yeah, you own the license and you're sublicensing it to a person. Um, but you can't transfer the rights. So if uh yeah, so like if you have a video game and they want to transfer all the rights and the sounds that you have Technically, <clears throat> you can't really do that. You can't transfer the rights. They have to like allow you to keep some of um some of the rights, or they just have to like buy the license for the splice splice sound or the sample pack or whatever themselves. So that's the that's the nitty gritty, or that's like the nuance there. So that's what they mean by transfer of rights. It's like you just can't give up everything and then have it have have them claim that they are the rights holder of that specific sound, but that is such a rare thing and like again shouldn't stop you from making a video game or anything because that's not what splice wants or anything. they're not trying to pro they're not trying to prohibit your creativity or your ability to commercialize your music um really they just don't want you to upload their sounds to other sample libraries or to like loop cloud or whatever you know or your own sample pack music site, site right like that's that's really it so, um, but with not low, yeah, but with, but with transforming sounds, I would say, um, in regards to not low, in regards to content ID, in regards to like everything I've talked about in this video, it's almost always better to transform the sound because it makes it harder for content ID and finger audio printing systems to pick it up. And it, and it just makes it more original, right? That's the whole point of music is to make something original or to transform something or make it your own. Um, and while sampling is cool, and and I would say there are sometimes a use case for like nostalgic factors or like an homage to something, and trying to retain the original sample's character or tonality. 
like there are use cases for that but in general like if uh you're just using a a sound that doesn't have any of that nostalgia fa factor or any of the or any context to it you should really try to transform it and just try something new make something wild and you know put your own flavor onto it put your own sauce on it whatever so that to, that's the best best practice i think for sampling um and to like get the most out of your splice samples or any sample packs that you use or anything in general but yeah that is everything i wanted to cover in this video again i've wanted to make this video for such a long time and i just saw that video the other day and it just immediately I, all this stuff everything that i've talked about just like was like that and i like knew what videos i wanted to reference and like what i wanted to talk about and explain in this video hopefully i've made it very simple for you to understand um if you have any questions or you need any clarifications again you know feel free to leave a comment or join our discord and uh, chat with us or to email me directly um our email is available on our youtube or uh, wherever else so yeah feel free to get in touch and you may notice i don't have like uh the most glamorous setup here um so i i'm kind of just i really i i have like a what i do with it i have a handy cam i forget what i did with my handy cam um but i had like a little dv camcorder that I was going to use but all my sd cards are fried so i can't actually record with it um and it, it's a slightly nicer camera so i had to like use this like um like usb webcam thing um and luckily i have like this fucking elvis microphone so uh yeah but yeah it's very low budget here uh, i wish i had like multiple cameras and like multiple shots and like high end like hd whatever um but i don't but if you want to support me and help improve the budget of our uh of these kinds of like uh video formats feel free to subscribe to our patreon um or donate um in our link tree or like whatever um you can always do that um but simply subscribing and leaving a like and being here for the next videos is always cool too and again if you have any 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 ideas or like any uh any type of videos that you think would be cool to see from us that you think would be similar or maybe even different i mean i'm down for anything um feel free to leave it below and if you're wondering why i'm dressed like this um i just i don't know i feel like people do things so seriously um and if you there's if the concept of the channel is like a pirate radio right so if you know the history behind that then i think it makes total sense but if you don't know that then you're probably just like wow why is this guy dressed like a freak um and that's valid too you know but maybe maybe i like dressing as a freak people don't often stop and consider that but yeah Thanks for tuning into Antihero, and I will see you in the next video.